All right, guys, so I am making a heartfelt video about music, and um, I'm going to talk specifically about hip-hop music and the umbrella of genres that are associated under hip-hop music that I feel personally is really not hip-hop music. So let's jump into it. Now, before I get into this, I want everybody to actually listen and listen to what's being said and listen to understand before listening to respond. That's the wise way to handle things, because what I'm about to say some people are going to take out of context. I can't help how you receive it, but the only thing I can do is express it. So just know it's coming from a good place. Now, this I want to make this clear. Hip-hop is not the only music or rap music, whatever you want to call it, is not the only genre of music. I can make videos about country music, uh, rock and roll, and I can talk about a lot of issues that go on with those genres. But I'm focused today on hip-hop because of the community that I deal with in my everyday life. So I want to talk more on that. So I'm not calling out hip hop like it's the only genre because I know there's people out there who will take this video and try to fit their narrative and their narrative is not my narrative. And I'm making that very clear because you people in rock and roll, those mosh pits and all that stuff that people do out there, that heavy metal stuff. Hey, man, y'all got some issues as well. So it goes across the board. It ain't just hip hop with issues. You got some issues too. go to a mosh pit and you'll see for yourself. All right. So in hip hop music, um, I remember going back to the 80s and the days of Ron DMC, Grandmaster Flash, and a lot of these artists, you know, Dougie Fresh, and it was it was pretty fun, it was cool. People, you know, they rapped over beats, they, they used to do a lot of stuff. Well, as time goes on, things are going to evolve as, as its natural course. So then you have NWA, for an example, who come out later in the early 90s, and their, their message is pretty powerful. Now, they came out in the late 80s technically, but early 90s, they really blew up. And people started uh, uh, hearing about Compton and learning more about the Bloods and the Crips and things like that. So then you fast forward, then you have trap music. Now, for you that that are young or not familiar with Georgia, just understand, just throwing this out there. I know a lot of y'all credit T.I. Or, or Young Jeezy with trap music, but Ghetto Mafia actually was talking about trap music in the early 90s and mid 90s, if you do your homework, and they're from the same city. Just saying. So it wasn't like T.I. was the first to talk about that, but he exposed it on a proper level. Now, fast forward past that, then you got drill music from Chicago. You know, you have a lot of artists coming out with drill music. And if you think about it, listen to the titles. You had hip hop originally, but all these other forms of expressions from different coasts and different regions of the USA has titles specifically to that message. Gangster rap, don't know who came up with that title. Um, then you have uh, trap music, then you have drill music. And these are not originally in the form of hip hop, but they are classified under the umbrella. And the reason why I'm making this video is um, I just find it funny that the culture originally is no longer being appreciated or valued anymore. If you try to come out today with a hip hop album and, you know, talk about some of the positive stuff that Grandmaster Flash talked about, you probably get laughed at and no label support. But if you come out and talk about things that the label support, Right. These artists that they put money in their face, these young artists on top of that, who are just trying to get a paycheck and they will talk about their everyday life to get money and, and also risk their life to, to get that money. Unfortunately, these labels, these grown men that are owners who are not part of the culture, who are not part of the community, they are paying these people to spew these messages and it gets supported and loved to the point to where you can make a video about drill music and talk about killing somebody and it goes viral. But if you come out and make a positive song like Arrested Development did or, you know, conscious messages, it doesn't get that same. It doesn't garner that same support. So we have to really be cognitive and aware of where the culture really is. Back then, it was it was controlled by the actual originators of that culture when hip hop was in its earliest form. But somewhere along the lines, it got distorted and it got into the hands of, of owners and labels. And then these people were able to see how they can capitalize on this as a monetary benefit. So now all these people are signed to these labels. They're rarely going independent. And now all of a sudden, they're, they're at the leisure of them. They have to do a certain amount of songs. And unfortunately, a lot of them are on drugs and it costs them their life. So, man, I hope that in this video, my goal is to edu you know, to help bring back where we originally came from and get back to that original form. No matter what style it is, you don't have to be from New York. You don't have to do none of that. You can be from down south, west coast, midwest, but get back to that original form of positivity, putting out some conscious messages, because that was the time, man, where it was cool to listen to Kumo D at the time when I was a kid, or listen to Public Enemy, 
or listen to Arrested Development, you know, R&B, you would hear like Anita Baker, you know, Luther Vandross, that type of music has some real soul to it and messages behind it. And nowadays, it's not so much common. So hopefully we can get back to that positive stuff because everybody likes all this 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 rah-rah stuff while it's entertaining until somebody legitimately gets killed. And what's crazy is a lot of people aren't seeing this, but all your artists that are promoting that type of music that leads to violence and death, their mothers got to find a way to pay for their kid to be buried and they probably don't even have the money. Them label owners go on to the next artist and don't care. If you listen to the mothers, not the artists and their friends, but the mothers of these artists, they're telling you a whole real side of the industry that's so bad and corrupt, it's sad, bro, and it keeps going on each generation. So I would hope that if you're a younger person especially, know the roots of where the real culture of music came from and go back to that positive, conscious way of thinking. Otherwise, you're just going to keep having self-destruction. By the way, there was a song called Self-Destruction back in the day. It's still applicable to today because that song is actually what's happening in today. And that song was made in the 80s. So I would hope that you guys go back, know the history, and try to you know uh, impact, your, impact the communities with a positive. As opposed to going out here, and even though it might be a reality for some people in those communities with negativity, it doesn't mean that we have to express that in that way, we can actually talk about making those changes, man. So hope this video helps. You know, if I could rap, I would, but I'm not a rapper. But I can damn sure get on YouTube and make a message to uh, help improve a lot of those gaps in that in the, in the genre and hopefully separate all those created things, these titles that came about and go back to the original form and not have it under the umbrella of hip hop because original hip hop is nowhere near close to this type of messages conveyed today. All right. Much love.